much. Really want to say thank you on behalf of all of us here for giving your time to us and giving your wisdom and insight to us. So thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Miguel. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Obrigado, senhor. Is there anything you want to add or any direction you want to point us in? Um, we're we're very uh, passionate amateurs, and you know we, we love your country, and we're keen to you know get involved and do whatever we can to show our you know our willingness to be great foreigners here. What would you suggest to us? This is amazing what you do, and I have to say thank you because uh, I can understand that you really love Portugal and you love to show what we have, which can be considered to be the best. Anyway, uh, you have come to Portugal quite recently, considering its history. And when we speak about wine and when we speak about Christmas and when we speak about what people eat, uh, what people prefer, everything is very different today from one century and 20 years ago. Because Christmas was really what, what was supposed to be. It was family gathering, people didn't have money, people didn't have uh, capacity to buy things, so they will come, they would work the 24th December all day in the agriculture, they will return home, they will collect the, the cabbage in the, in the backyard, and that's what they would eat. And it was a very special night because of that. Uh, people who didn't have money, they didn't have presents, they didn't have Santa Claus, they just knew that they were celebrating the birth of baby Jesus and they were uh, gathering together to do that. So uh, they would be in one room because houses generally have two rooms, the sleeping ones and the kitchen, and they would be all in the kitchen eating from the same bowl, sharing the real sense of sharing. Uh, today, it, it's not well seen, but uh, at that time, uh, and as if we can look back and, and take the picture of it, people which are tired, which come home from hard work, and they, they get together sharing their meal, and uh, the older ones would say uh, tell stories to the to the younger ones and it was amazing to to have the view it is amazing to have the view of this celebration because that's what christmas was and one thing they would do was the cabbage and probably a, a chicken which was killed once a year because people didn't have the money to, to eat more meat than that. And then for the celebration, they would cook the bellows with a pumpkin yep. and they would spend the night speaking to one to another, uh, but they would wait for the midnight, not just because there was they are celebrating the baby Jesus, but because there was a tradition and it's still kept in some parts of the country. Uh, the, the older man of the house at midnight will, would take a stick, uh, uh, a stick uh, wood from the, the firewood burning and he would go outside, he would put up and whether the, the smoke went north or south, that was the, the meaning they would have a good or a bad ear in terms of agriculture and a good or bad year in terms of agriculture meant uh, a good or bad year uh, for everyone in what regards the the capacity of eating the capacity of provide things they didn't have at their at their houses and at this period people generally worked for the others because they didn't have land uh, most of the land was owned by by Ushinyorj, the, the, the most important uh, persons in, in the town. And they would work and work and work and work, but they were still very happy. And they didn't import oranges or tropical fruits, not even uh, toys or 
whatever. They were generally sharing a family time. It was wow. very, very nice. And I had the chance to to listen to some 20 or 30 people with more than 80 or 90 years old uh, telling me all these stories. So it's very nice to have the chance to get our children and, and adults to understand that Christmas has changed a lot. There was no Madeira. Probably just, there was no wine there. And uh, only if someone had the the kind thought of offering the family wine because they generally worked uh, for the the the, the 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 main house of the town and they would make the wine but it was not for them wow I, I just that want, is so beautiful go on just want to ask miguel right i mean i love the story about the smoke going <laughs> south or going north and I, i've heard this and there are some football supporters in Portugal, yeah, that, that they, they get the burning stick, yeah, and they hold it up. And if it goes north, it's Porto, yeah? And if it goes south, it might be in right? Benfica or Sporting. Is this true? Well, I don't know if it's true, but as, as all the legends, if we believe, who knows? Well said. Well which, said, Miguel. Which, which way is it flowing this year, buddy? That is so beautiful. If you see Chinese Terry out in the street doing that on Christmas Day, that's what he's doing. Porto or Miguel, the, the, the Bacalao uh, Christmas, when did that sort of start and how did that come about? Sorry, Gary, didn't understand. The, the Bacalao at Christmas, the, the salt cut, when did that come into sort of uh, Christmas um, sort of Oh, okay. Bacalhau being the, the Christmas lunch. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly the date, but it was towards mid 20th century, I would say, because uh, all fi the, the whole fish that people could eat here was the sardines they would buy for a little price in the market. Once a week, they would buy five sardines if they were lucky, and they would keep it. They wouldn't have fridge, so they would keep it uh, close to the the firewood because the the smoke helped to conserve the sardines, and then they would eat from there the entire week. That's the sardines, not not bacalhau. <laughs> Yeah. So, Miguel, are you are you a historian? Is this is this a, a professional or, or um, a, a personal hobby interest you have in in the history of Portugal? I really love East, uh, our ancestors' history. I don't I don't specifically love history as as history uh, yeah. of humanity, but I really think that for us to know who we are, we need to know from where we come. Oh, well said. Yeah. Well said, absolutely. And and can I ask you? I don't. I don't mean to put you on the spot. And and, and you're very welcome to you know to to answer exactly as you feel is is appropriate. But you know, this is an, next year will be a very important year for Portugal with the 50th anniversary of the Carnation Revolution. Would you Would you care to be our friendly historian, our reference point in terms of that amazing? cultural phenomenon for Portugal. Can we can we ask you questions about that as well? Will you come back and talk to us about that? Well, I, I, as uh, common knowledge, because I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't study history. I, I like to understand uh, what our former generations went through. And right. I was really related to folklore for 20 years, and what I worked on was ethnography. So I tried to understand what people went through, what they ate, what they dressed, what they ate, what they used to do. And if you are absolutely right when you say that the 24th of April was in 74 was an important day because it changed everything. It yes. changed the way people thought he yeah. opened doors that we didn't know that they were there right and 
It's so interesting, isn't it? 50 years later. I mean, this is the most recent major revolution in Europe, I would say. And the political turbulence in Europe, the world generally, there's a special significance for Portugal next year, isn't there? And, and the politicians will no doubt be using it as a, a reference point for their own purposes, because that's what they do. And it's understandable. And there's a whole cultural backstory that we might look into and, and that would help us understand the country we've moved to. So, like I said, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you'd care to come back and join us and speak about that at some later date, we'd be delighted to to have you here. And I thank Gary for, you know, bringing for inviting you here, and and thank you for being here tonight, yeah, Miguel. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Gary, for inviting me. And whenever I can, I'll I'll be with you uh, if you consider uh, it to be appropriate. But I, I'm a storyteller. I'm not an historian. Perfect. We're all storytellers. Go on, learned, Gary. I've learned so much from Miguel in, in, in the time that we've been friends. You know, the little things you would not pick up uh, and, you know, you would pass by and you wouldn't know. I mean, there's so many things he's just said there in that sort of last statement that probably nobody on this screen ever knew about. It's so useful to know those things is you live in a country and you want to keep that tradition alive, which yeah. which I want to do. I want to be part of that culture. I want to hold on to that bit of history. And if I can add to it. So thank you very much, Miguel. You, you've yeah. done a great job. Absolutely. Thank you. You, you are all very generous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, feel free to to go and enjoy the rest of your evening in, in, in the way that you know how. Because um, we're going we're gonna to continue to go around the room. But thank you, Miguel. You're welcome to stay. Thank you. I understand if you want to check out. Bye-bye. Well. It's such a pleasure to be with you, all of you. Okay. And I oh. wish you Merry Christmas and a very special 24th. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.